this is home. You know, when I'm here at this at this shop, it's, you know, I have so many customers who are who've been here like you said for just generations. And, and that's the thing is, is that all of a sudden you you end up in a place where I'm sort of nestled in the middle of not only all of these people who've been here for generations, but all of their family stuff. It's like you know, like all their dead people's things. Yeah, like exactly. All, we're, we're, like saying dead people's things. That's a big part of what makes this home. It's like, this is not a, sh this is more like a museum. It is. I mean, and yeah. all of these things carry somebody's memories yeah, or somebody's true. stories. Yep. And how much of that has been discarded by the families. That's right. Because it's not about the thing, it's about the place or the feeling. And when you walk in here for 10 bucks, you can have a really good story. Yeah, exactly. I like them. I like them this way better than a museum. Yeah. Well, I've had people come in here and be like, "You need to hire me to straighten this out." Like, only to have the next Saturday be so busy it looks like this again. But besides that, the thing is, is you know, I don't clean anything. I don't. I mean, I may dust it off a little bit, but um, you know, the the thing is, is that who's got time for that? I guess I like to dig, and I would think that other people like to dig. You know? it's, it's like digging or cultivating. Yeah. You know, like when you're a creative kind of person. It's like an episode have... of American Pickers when you walk in here. It's like, oh, my God. You know, I, I will find some. I'll dig through a box and find something. I'll be like, wow, this is cool. And I put it there. You know, so it's like it's just a lot of fun. You know, we have fun with it. But you're right. It's, it's a lot of local history. It's, it's, it's people's history. It's, it's family history. Well, it's like when you go into a museum, it's pretty stuffy. It is. You know, like you can look at it and through the glass and you yeah. can't touch it. And it's like of great importance. Yeah. But people don't live that way. See, I mean, like, hang on just a second. Oh, crash. Never mind. I sold it last week. I forgot. It was a 1913 Coca-Cola bottle from the Nashville plant. And then I have a, a section over here where... Um, from all, it's all like local history, Springfield. Mm -hmm. Like I was out in a junkyard in Springfield about a year back. How do you and, know uh, it's a junkyard, not somebody's backyard? Well, because <laughs> it, they had shut it down about 30 years ago mm -hmm. and it, all, it was a junkyard and, and literally the man ran it as a junkyard and it, the, it had been shut down for like 30 years. And then the county said either open it and do business or clean it up. So the the guy running the show called a bunch of us like me out there to go out there and start buying. And I ended up buying the original sign that said America's finest dark fire no tobacco shit. out of the center of Springfield. Where is it at now? God, I bought... No way. No, here's what's interesting. Okay. I bought a part of it from that, from there, mm -hmm. a bunch of the letters and the, and the actual frame, <laughs> and I had it sitting here for ever. And a lot of people knew what it was and wanted it, but I wasn't willing to part with it. Well, the guy who had the rest of it came in here, and he knew the guy who had the, who owned the junkyard, the old man mm -hmm. who passed away who owned the junkyard. And he says, "I've got the rest of that." He said, "I'd like to buy it." And so a lot of the a lot of the times, the things that's happening here is that it's like I'll have a piece to something, and and, and it's like I just know to save it. It's like okay, you know what? Set that aside. And a lot of times I'll either end up finding the rest of it at another place and putting the whole set together, or somebody will come in here and, and like with that sign, this guy was like, I have the rest of that. I've been looking for that. And he's like, where did you get it? And I told him the, the junkyard where I got it. And he said that they had looked for it out there before, that they were told it was there and they had gone out there looking for it, but never found it. I ended up finding it in a old school bus that was junked up in there. And it was 
like slid underneath a bunch of crap. That's where all the good stuff is, right? It's crazy. And and tucked underneath the mattress of or yeah. underneath or it was it was incredible, you know, so so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that happens. It's really cool. And you know, I mean, you got everybody and their brother who collects anything around here who would kill to get their hands on that thing, you know what I mean? And I'm just glad to get it back together and where it goes. That that's one of the things that happens here. Like um, when I did that Nashville Star, they asked me like, "What's your ultimate vacation?" It's like to not leave the driveway for a week. Right? I was like, you "I know? don't, I don't need anywhere." Yeah. You have like the best junk out here. Yeah, we got good junk. This is uh, it's like that uh, a lar a lard stand. Yeah. You like to cook in? It's like crackling. That's where <laughs> I'm leaving when I leave here. They're killing. They killed a hog. Oh my God. And they're making sausage. They're, you know, people come out here, they're like, nice, this is awesome. I'm like, yep, my life's work. <laughs> like, look, at, look at all this stuff. I know when my grandmother died, they, got, they took like three dumpsters, and I was like, can I please go through there? Oh, my God, you got to go through it. Oh, you they, know, they the they thing is, is, it, is that it looks like a big pile of crap, but when you actually pull, you know what the coolest thing is? When people go around digging through mm. everything, and they make a pile that they want to buy, and all of a sudden you see their personality in that one pile yeah, of stuff. Yeah, but we see your personality here. This is your pile. My house don't look like this. <laughs> yeah, probably because your wife's That's like, uh-uh. Cool no. No, yeah, well, you know, actually, um, yes, but not in a bad way. The, the interesting thing about that is is that she's, she's in uh, medical, mm -hmm. so she's like science. Um, you know, when she sees this stuff, she sees germs, dirt, and rust, and which I see too, but I mean, um, so she, but she doesn't have that artistic eye. She has more of a science way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people are like, oh my God, your wife must love this. And it's like, not particularly. No, but she loves me. But when I clean it off <laughs> mm -hmm. and make it look cool, then bring it out, she's like, oh yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's gotta be all like packaged up. It, it really But does. isn't that what you do with the song though? It you is. take all this crusty stuff and you package it up into something that's oh, nice. Oh, wait you hear Rust. I wrote a song called Rust. Somebody's got to be able to handle it. Hey, hey. Ooh, there's a line in the song. <laughs> there you go. Rust. All right, let's see what we got in here. This might have been your bike when you were little. Mm, probably not. It didn't survive. It's a little dark. I you remember get, killing it. You probably bought yeah. gas there growing up. Absolutely. Little prayers be on your blessed friend's Christmas day. Let's see what else we got here. Here's some old, uh, these might be old. Yeah, this is like old film lights. Oh, wow. The... Like from somebody who's like eight millimeter or something. Wow. Like old camera lights, hang them They probably them. get so hot you could roast some marshmallow on them. <laughs> right. But you know, I mean, I got, there's a guy, Busby, he's passed away now, but he was one of the big hit songwriters. And he, he collected strange lighting. So he would come come in here and like just dig and dig and dig and search for Hey, for this is my lighting. find for the day. What's the that? The ab roller. Take, Do you know how I like busted my mouth? Take it more with than, you. you no, can it's have okay. It. I'm good. You're good. You're I'm like, good. No, no, this no. is like a torture device. It's like. Yeah, right. It's like you bust yourself in the mouth with it. You, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <clears throat> it's like, um, that's why I don't exercise. It's too dangerous. One of the things that, uh, you know, like, that's cool is, is that, you know, you usually have the piece of the day. Like, right. Ooh, like, this really cool like thing. what is this? Like, what was I don't it? know, but I wish this had something in it. Antifreeze. You shouldn't drink that stuff. It's freaking cold. No, right. <laughs> um, stuff like this, you know. It's like, I mean, I know what it is, but. It's a drill. There are a lot of people. Right? Well, you read it. No, I didn't. But there's I, a lot I can't of, read. I'm illegitimate. There, right. But there's pieces that it's like, I'll find something and nobody knows what it is. So one time I had this one thing and nobody could tell me what it was. And I took it around. I was doing, you know, yard sales, trash and treasures, all that stuff. Nobody knew what it was. Finally, one day, this old man come up and he pulls it out of a bucket. This, 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 this old thing. Yeah, like this. What is this? That's probably uh, for starter parts for uh, Briggs and Stratton, yep, that's small engine parts. So, so dude pulls out a box, he's staring at it. Again, another old man, 90, 95 years old. And I walk up, I was like, 
you know what that is? And he goes, I know what it is. Do you know what it is? I said, I have no idea what it is. And I've been dragging this thing around for a year and nobody can tell me what it is. And uh, so he says, that's a shock absorber for a Model T. He says, he says, I'm not strong enough anymore. He says, but you put pressure on that. He says, you'll feel a spring inside. So I was like, all right. So I grab it. I put pressure. Sure enough, there's a spring. Okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. I said, well, I said, you know what it is. You're the first one. I've had this thing a year and nobody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. I said, you must want to buy it. I'll give it to you for a dollar. He says, you want to know why I know what this thing is? I said, well, why is that? He says, because when I was a little boy, he says, my dad was a Model T, Model A mechanic. And I would wake up five in the morning. He'd put me in the shop till school. He said, then we'd get out of school and he'd put me in the shop till dinner. And then after dinner, he'd put me in the shop till I went to bed. He said, and if I never see another one of these things as long as I live, I like, it's going to be too soon. And I just started laughing. That is my favorite part about this is when somebody walks in and just knows what something was that, that nobody else can figure out. And that is... That's the, that's the magic here, you know. There's a lot of magic that happens here between the family history and people knowing what something is. But the thing that I noticed is that when it comes to old rusty junk is it's a lifestyle. There's literally people will gather in my parking lot and drinking coffee and hanging out and talking junk and hey Joe, how's the, f like you said, everybody knows everybody. And people really come together over, you know, they, if over the dinner table and over the junk table. If people believe that rocks have power. You <laughs> yeah. know, like they have these new age rocks. This yeah, rock has a yeah, special yeah. power. It came out of a hole in the ground, like on the other side of the world. Why can't somebody's memories be contained in the thing? That is true. Even yeah. if it's just the spark of the memory. It's yeah. like it's up here somewhere. I mean, some either. kid wore that helmet up there. Played in that thing. Probably not enough. Right? <laughs> you know, he'll probably walk in here. But no, you're right. You know, these things hold that energy. You speak about it holding energy, you'd be surprised that like this light, it could sit there for a month and then somebody will come in and go, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I might get that. And then they walk and look at other stuff and it's been sitting there a month. Next thing you know, somebody comes up, I'll take this. And then somebody else is like, oh man, I was going to get that, you know. Uh. And then two days later, somebody will walk in here and go, didn't you have a red light sitting here? I was, I was going to come back for that. Like a piece that's been sitting there, as soon as somebody touches it and puts their energy into it. But that's like a song. Isn't that incredible? A, a song, a recipe, yeah, a place. It's like right. nobody notices until everybody notices. Yeah, that's true. And then that's my thing. That's my place. It's just phenomenal how that works, the energy that gets poured into things. I had a um, Ruby Keith. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all know Ruby Key. Okay, I cleaned that place out, me and Shane from Dead People's Things. Mm -hmm. Well, he moved out to, uh, to Cottontown and uh, sold the farm. And prior to that, if you went in there, I, that thing, that place was a local history museum. There's like four or five barns, two or three outbuildings, a basement, an attic, and the house. And it was just, it was like this. It wasn't set up like a museum. This was just their junk. But I mean, this history went so far back in the, and they saved everything. Everything. And I ain't talking like dead cats and pizza boxes. I'm, you know, and hoarders. I'm talking about like, so when I was bringing truckloads over here, everybody in the area was descending upon my shop. Tim's cleaning out the Ruby Keith place. Get over to his shop. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, Bill, uh, Norfleet come in and he finds a baseball sign-up sheet in all this stack of papers that I pulled out of Ruby Keith's attic and he's because uh, Bill was looking for some a certain yearbook his missing one from a collection mm -hmm. and he knew I got a ton of them in here and um, so baseball sign-up sheet and it's Dickie Richard mm -hmm. and uh, Bill's like oh I know Dickie I'll, I'll tell him this is here it's got his picture thumbprint all filled out 10 years old, 1956. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. So I set it aside. Forget all about it. Two weeks later, a man walks in here. He says, excuse me. I said, yeah. He says, I hear you have a document here bearing my name. And I was like, oh, are you Dickie Richard? He says, yeah. You know, he's up in the 70s now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I grab it and I hand it to him. And he's standing there for a couple of minutes, which is a long time. He's just g g gazing at it. And he's like, that's me. 
10-year-old picture of himself. He's like, that's my signature. I mean, this is my handwriting. He's like, where did you get this? I said, up in the attic over at, uh, at Ruby Keith's place. I said, do you know Ruby Keith? He says, never heard of him. Now, Dickie's an insurance salesman out of Springfield. And uh, I said, well, maybe, maybe Ruby Keith was like the Little League commissioner here or something back then. He says, you don't understand. Look at the city. And it's Shreveport, Louisiana. And I said, you mean to tell me no way. you've never seen this in your adult life? And he's like, I probably ain't seen this since the day I turned it in. And he says, I didn't move to White House till uh, 1989. Everything gets back to Cross Plains. <laughs> it all, like used to the city, there's a city limit sign in Cross Plains and somebody spray painted it. It's like the town of no return. <laughs> right. I mean, his baseball sign of sheet from 10 years old ended up here. And, and so he did ended he. up and here. And so did he. Standing here reunited, right, right there. And it was just like this. At the crossroads. Like literally. you with that painting, you know yeah. what I mean? But but that happened so much here. It's a, it's a really, uh, it's, it's really its own thing. This building unto itself, the amount of people who walk in here and tell me the stories about them growing up, which is interesting about the Roy Acuff picture, mm -hmm. because the thing is, is that one of the stories is, is that Roy Acuff lived out towards Greenbrier, Porter Wagner lived out towards Portland, and uh, I don't know if it was Ferlin Husky, but this is the building where they would all come and meet. Like, this hey, is we're the going crossroads. Right here. And they'd sit right over here. Uh, from, this, from what I was told by somebody in here, there was a table over here in this corner, and they'd sit over here and play cards. It's, you know? it's literally the crossroads. It's the crossroads, man. Yep. And, and, and definitely glad to be here and be a part of the history of that. You know, yep. Someday somebody's going to be saying, remember that little old man who had that junk shop over at the crossroads? Yeah. Somebody's going to be like, that was my grandfather. You know what I mean? It's like. Hopefully they knew your grandfather before <laughs> they got here. Well, you know, we're going to be like, you know, you were saying earlier, you were like, well, you know, my grandfather knew their grandfather. You know, our, our great grandchildren are going to be like, and my grandfather was Facebook friends with your great grandfather. And <laughs> yeah, right. They, they used to Snapchat. They, yeah, never, right. they never actually talk. Snap face. Yeah. I don't do all that snap face. Yeah. Well, Tim, thank you very much. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Sweet you Pickens. Too. Sweet Pickens. White House, Tennessee. White House, Tennessee. <laughs>